All right, and welcome everybody to what I think is our 26th hour of Excel Virtually Global. Um, if I didn't introduce myself when I started uh, talking to Tony, but my name is Tim Heng, one of the directors here at Sun Product, and I'm very glad to welcome you all uh, to this next session, uh, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching online. Um, the next session is going to be interactive charts with Python and Excel uh, by MVP Carlos Barboza. Uh, Carlos is an economist by training, graduated with honors from the University of Hartford. He simply considers himself an Excel craftsman or a guerrilla data analyst with 10 years of experience crafting flexible and scalable spreadsheets that support data driven decision making, along with seven years of cleaning data, building data models and developing graphical displays for Power BI reporting. Okay, okay. Hi, Tim. Uh, I'm on muted right now. So you are on muted. Well, you. welcome. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for the time being here. Uh, also honored to go after Tony and try to make some defense for Python in Excel <laughs> early days. But uh, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to to sh to just show that um, we are bridging two worlds here, uh, Python and Excel. Uh, with many different paths. Uh, uh, Tony has this awesome adding. Uh, now you also have it natively and you have other options as well. So I'll share my screen here and if, just uh, you let me know. Do I st I'm already all set, Tim? Uh, if you share your screen, um, give me a couple of seconds to pop it up so everyone can see it. OK, sure. So I'm about to I'm about to I'm already. Well, my size is saying it's presenting. So, yep. so I'm going to push it live and now everybody should see it. Is it perfect? OK, so yes, basically let me just do something here. Perfect. OK, um, this oh, there we go. OK, so basically um, this is the what, what can be possible with Python uh, interactive, which my presentation is interactive charts with Python in Excel, but uh, since you know, the Python community doesn't call it charts, they call it plots. We now can call it interactive plots with uh, Python in Excel. Um, and the reason is because uh, a chart like this that you see here on screen uh, in Excel will be kind of cumbersome, will be very hacky to make. It, 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 it could be possible, uh, but it will be very hacky, very crafty, and will be time consuming just to lay out the logics on the back to get this, for example. Now, this is a Python plot, OK? And the formula for it is actually this, OK? Which is nice because, uh, and I'm, let me just maybe zoom in a little bit there. And just open that. There we go. See, we can see a little bit bigger. So look at how this is a new possibility that so simple is this formula that you can see that plots this this graph that we see in here just that formula alone and that's a python formula or python code for the python developers okay but that develops the graph on the right and that's awesome because it's very as you can see it's not very difficult though up to that point as soon as you get or start caring about the details um then the python formula or code will start getting a little bit lengthy because of the details that you're sort of targeting to sort of enhance. So the the one of the things that I, I think I agree with Tony at the end of his uh, talk was the global variables. And it, it is true. I mean, that is something that you have to address early on so you don't get into a whole mess. That's right now, I have to sometimes relabel my data frame, my initial data frame, so that way it doesn't get confused or I don't get confused with manipulating later on in another upcoming or new worksheet. So it's a good point that Tony mentioned on his uh, on his Q&A session or end of his talk. So OK, so basically now let's just step back uh, whoop, one second here. Just hold it that. There we go. So that's, for example, here now the Python plot. Again, now I'm just going to switch the variable here or b before that, what are you seeing here? Uh, and what you're seeing here is just a hex bin with marginal distribution. It's hard to comprehend maybe for a lot of folks. It's an advanced chart, I'll be honest. But here, for example, I'm plotting the duration 
Okay, right now it's in Spanish, but we'll make it again in, in English. The duration in minutes of movies, which is going to be on your Y and your X axis. And then on the Y axis is the sort of like the um, grading from one to 10 of a bunch of movies of this database, which I can tell you that is not completely real, it's, uh, it's fake to play around with. And it's only about 3,700 movies that, you know, basic, basic data set that you can, you know, just use to play around. And if we were to plot this simply with a scatter plot, this is how it will look. Let me just go grab the, those two columns, which is right here, duration and qualification. So I'm just going to grab those two, make a new worksheet, just paste it here, and then just maybe do switch the variables, delete this and put this right next to that because that's the Y values and the first column is the X values. And you just insert that or maybe do backspace. One of the keyboard shortcuts that I shared yesterday and let's just plot the this, okay? This is pretty much what's being plotted and we'll put it right next to it. I'm just gonna enhance something here, control one, uh, undock this and then Marker, no border, fill, uh, solid fill, but let's make it 20 maybe, just to maybe get the points. Yep, there we go. All right, now let's put this, maybe we delete the chart title too, and we'll bring this to the other side. So right here. So that's what you're seeing eventually, just in a more enhanced version. What do I mean by that? It's just that, Instead of seeing each individual dot, which is individual movie, well, the hex bin is doing to sort of concentrate many of those dots and then kind of like group them, like consolidating them or like package them in, in a hex bin. And that's what you're seeing here. So, for example, that's why you see a couple of hex beans here that are very dark is because of the concentration of points that are within that hex bin area. But the thing about this Excel chart is that, okay, that's nice, but if I wanted to add these bars just to show the histogram distribution or the distribution in, in a histogram looking chart type, then wow, it will be like making another chart or making another hack of doing the arrow bars on top and on the side, which is gonna, it gets hacky. Here, you just saw the formula. And here we get it easily on top and easily on the right. And that's it, like you're seeing this very easily. And that's what's pretty much the hex being with marginal distribution. It's an extension of the scatter plot, but with the histogram on top and on the right. So we can delete that and we'll maybe use this for later. Let's leave this space here. So what's cool here is that, okay, where the, that you can combine a Python plot uh, with slicers pivot table slicers. So in this case, what you're seeing here and here are two slicers uh, from pivot tables. So right now I have duration min minimum in minutes and then the grading, like I said, but maybe I want to see it in a different way. Maybe I want to see it based on reseñas totales, which is like the number of reviews. And I switched it, but nothing happened. And the thing is I have to go to the parting formula where that is located and then control enter. And the only reason I'm doing that, um, again, because maybe, uh, yeah, uh, as Tony said, the Python in Excel right now kind of triggers all the calculation of all the cells. Um, so that's why you potentially might want to do uh, the Excel lab Python editor, and that will kind of like help you just to target the calculation of one cell as opposed to all of the cells. And let's just leave, maybe leave it open, this little frame right here and dock it too, because feels a little bit tight there, so let's just make it bigger. And yep, you can put it on top of the river and we can we can have it here. Maybe we can put it right here so that way it doesn't plot with it doesn't fight with the plot. And we can just put it in. We can hide Python iPod and maybe this make a little bit bigger. Okay, there we go. So yep, as you can see already calculated, and now we see another picture of the data. That's what's cool we can really get many angles, many perspectives, many contexts from the data, from a basic dummy data, which is just movies, you know? But 
like we can switch all these all these variables. Now I'm, I'm about to switch it to another one just to see. But as you notice, it does take uh, a bit of uh, calculation on the back. Let me maybe just uh, uh, close this again. OK, so let me just maybe switch it to be, for example, maybe um, we'll do well, in this case, for example, if I were to read this, the number of reviews, I would assume they, the more reviews that they're given, potentially the more gradings I could get. So um, in a way, maybe I'll do this real quick. Um, I see in it, I don't see, let me just open here real quick something. Summit and do this in red. So there's a little bit of uh, if you were to draw some like calculated uh, a statistical calculation called lowest line, you might see something like this drawn um, because potentially maybe yeah, um, it, it is true. You can assume that the more reviews you're given in uh, on your movies, potentially the more up upper gradings uh, you can get. That's that's some an assumption, right? But then you go with the statistics and test it if that's true. In this case, we kind of see that. Yeah, the more reviews that you get, which is this, the X axis, seems like the higher your gradings come to be on the movies that they were, uh, you know, by the community, they give a grading. But then it kind of flattens out or it kind of being, seems to be this curve, okay? That's kind of like how you kind of sort of interpret a uh, plot like this. Now, I'm about to switch. The, the variables again. So maybe I'll do I'll do qualifications um, based on movies or maybe based on yeah based on the revenue that they produce ingresses in Spanish. And let's just switch it again. And this is a cool this is a the right now the part that it takes its time about a second or two depending on the complexity of the plot to calculate. It's not it's not immediate like tone it's adding, for example, but it, it, you, you have to weigh and potentially maybe time out depending on the complexity of the plot. So here you can see another view. We can see maybe that, um, yep, a higher higher movies that have a higher grading and then maybe also the, the distribution on revenue is very skew, you know, and if you were to put this like uh, maybe Put it like this. You can say that oh, okay, it's less less left skew, as it's known in in reading the charts of uh, distribution. But maybe this one doesn't make sense. So again, you got the slicers just to play around and switch the variables to see. You know, I'm just switching it back to how it was, and leave it at again. So you have that freedom. Hey, here they it was kind of quick, kind of instant. Here you have um, the liberty of playing around with your variables. Just in case, um, um, I have partial calculation here on this um, on this setting. That's why it's not immediate. I have to go in here and do Control Enter. Okay. So now, if we were to like assemble this real quick, is this is is that easy? Okay. It's not really. It doesn't take that much time. For example, I have this data set here, and I'm about to just convert it into a table. Control T. Make it like that. Ooh, that the that layout is not uh, the color. I'll just switch it to maybe a little bit more pale, like that. And then we'll give it a name. Uh, maybe we can call this. Um, uh, we'll give this a name of zero one data. Uh, and okay. And then um. I go to here on this first graphic, but maybe what maybe I want to do. Yep, we can put it here. You kind of like say a name and this and this name is going to be equal to. And then I'm going to go to the table and I'm going to like go right here on top and go all the way across and then all the way down. And as you can see, I'm, I'm kind of selecting all the data from here. So all and I believe this should do it. Do control enter. And it's going to calculate VC as you can see. And maybe I just want to double check with my Shishi, which is this one. Uh, ta, ta, ta. There we go. And then just go here. And all, okay. So I just missed header equals true. Okay. That wasn't automatic, but we can add it here real quick. And that's it. I'm already given uh, a name to this. It's not longer call and do 
control enter it's no longer called like data and hash i mean hash all with in brackets no it's now called tbl so i can use tbl as a data frame variable across down and to the right but it has to be right from this point and down from this point if i put it here it won't work if i put it over here it won't work that's the reading order logic of um, of python and excel and which can be sort of uh you know can be something tricky later on but um it, it is what it, it, it is how it is now oh sorry oh I, I clicked that and we'll see that in a minute and then the other point is that okay that's something to be, be very you know cautious about v kind of do go and read about recommended practices of coding or programming that's something i would recommend you because you can adopt some of the recommended practices into your python in excel developments uh, or, or endeavors or work because uh, like again i'm about to give a tbl here and i'm about to use it on this example but then maybe for the next example maybe i want to use another data frame then i have to define another data frame with another name so that way things kind of get separate if you lose that sort of uh, organization then later on uh if your work gets really advanced uh it might become a, a, a bit uh, hectic so okay so we got the data frame now what i'm gonna get is sort of my variables which is from movies which is i just want this right here and this is the that same database but in english okay just in case and then i'm just gonna go control one and i'm gonna convert this and basically these headers right here this is what i want all of them because these are the numerical part of the data so how do i get them well i can go and say hey you know what i want first of all transpose because i'm gonna go and go to the table and just go and grab it from here and then control enter and as soon as i do i get all that but i need a header because i'm bringing this to a pivot table and again i think i mentioned this and another other presentations about sort of doing this in order to make your work expandable or uh, elastic so i'm gonna call b stack and then i'll enter which i like i explained in my previous session and then i'll enter again just to put it uh something here that i'm gonna call um uh, measures yeah or maybe variables yeah, that's, that's a good name comma and then I go to the last part and then close the b stack so this is what eventually is saying i'm just adding variables on top of the of the other array which were the column names or fields so maybe i'll put a nice color here to that so that way as soon as i put that color you can see that now it's, it gives that contrast or expands that section of the formula with that said now i can just maybe uh go to in, highlight this and go insert a pivot table instead of pivot table yep just a new worksheet and then i don't know why it pops up like that but most potentially for a lot of folks it's gonna open like this just in case you can undock it just left click on on the header and pagata. and then do variable rows and then right click here remove grand total then maybe what we can do is on, on design we just can maybe just convert into a white pivot table like one i mean white pivot style light one style <laughs> and then maybe just right click here and pivot table options and do deselect out of it with the out of it take that out and then maybe the other thing is that you want to remove row labels so the way to do that really fast is just design and repair layout just tabular four okay and just maybe filter any any variable just maybe cast like okay so now we got that and cop cut it and then go back to here there we go okay and now we have to repeat the same process again this is was kind of a, a, a bit of a pity but again let's just do it insert pivot table and the reason I have to do it again and not just copy the pivot table is because of the cache of pivot tables. So that's why I'm just repeating this again. And we'll do this faster. Remove grand total, pivot table options, out of it, 
and then design that and report layout tabular. Perfect. And let me just maybe just put here maybe duration in minutes. There we go. And then bring this to my worksheet here. So maybe separate this a bit so that way we can see. And here, what I'm going to do is about just um, for this one, I'm going to call it the X variable, X bar. And then this one, the Y bar. OK, there we go. So now it's about just bringing the formula. Uh, which is. Yeah, close this and close that. We don't need that. Which is going to be this one right here. So I'm just going to I have it generically. OK, but then again, uh, give some credits because this is I'm really learning about Python uh, very much because now um, I think now with Python and Excel, it gives you sort of a comfy place to practice, to sort of uh, mess up, to make mistakes, to really get to know the possibilities, you know, without installing maybe Python or maybe Jupyter Notebooks. Just try it out. But you will see that there's a lot of benefits, a lot of benefits. And I think uh, it's just bridging two worlds. And I think this is going to be a big win for Excel analyst to jump into the Python uh, world. Uh, I don't think vi vice versa, maybe, but uh, I think more of uh, Excel users becoming Python developers. I, I really hope that because, um, you know, you can practice here and then say, hey, you know what, it's time for, you know, the next step, maybe a Jupyter Notebook, and maybe the next step is another environment that requires more robust solutions, okay? Um, so once we have that, uh, I guess we can put the formula here and I do control shift P and then control V and we cannot see that here. There we go, expand that formula and remove this, okay? And then here was pretty much telling me, hey, we, we on this formula that is kind of generic, kind of template, we have to put here what's going to be your field name. So here is where I actually go and replace this field name. Do this and paste it to be the X variable. And then replace this to be the Y variable. And as you can see, there is the, y, the Excel function that only exists for the Python environment. Or Python in Excel environment, so it's kind of like the the bridge function that kind of connects the two worlds. Okay, I'm connecting a value in a cell, and then submitting it through a Python formula. Once I have this, pretty much I'm all set. Control Enter, and then basically the chart will the image is gonna appear here, the object icon, and now I do right click, or actually I I I prefer to do it this way. I once I see this insert data icon. I go and click image and now I have the formula here and I have the image here, which is very, very small. So um, I see a lot of people doing merging and centering cells. Um, that's fine, but you can just click on this image and then picture in cells and place over uh, create reference. And once you have that and let's collapse that, that's it. You know, we just built it from scratch, but now it's not, not so great looking. So maybe what we can do here is maybe just switch or while well, we, we forgot something very crucial is the slicers. How do we add the slicers? You, you go to the pivot table and then right click, add a slicer. And then go to the other, other pivot table, show field list, and then right click, add a slicer. And we have the two there. And we maybe we can do this, put it one here and put the other one here. And then expand this and make it just smaller. And make this a little bit more vertical. There we go. And there you go. So now it's about you no know, switching. So maybe what I want to do is sorry for the underscore, that's very uh, developer style, right? Um, so for, for maybe what we want to do is uh, the IBD, IADVM score. So I just switched it to that and let's just recalculate again. This one should work. Mm. Okay, so maybe IDVM score with um, duration in minutes. 
You should get the same picture as the other one. Not seeing why. There we go. There. Same as the other example that I started with. So as you can see here now, I have a very interactive plot where I can switch my variables just to see the data from different angles. I, I mean, the, the other chart was another angle just to see it from that way. So you, you have this freedom of really switching your variables and really saying and go with really what they call exploratory data analysis. Now for this, I want to give credit for continuing that I learned it from Minda Tracy. You know, initially I got really inspired from her video, from her first initial video uh, of new Python in Excel. So there's already a lot of re re resources on YouTube, a lot of resources of um, to learn Python in Excel. I mean, or at least to get your feet wet. And I have come up with a, um, a humble playlist. I will say that, right click, new tab. And on this, be also before continuing on the playlist, on her video, she kind of tells you where she got the formula. And for that example, that she leaves that graph, um, we'll see in a little bit. I don't know if it will come up here. It doesn't. It does come a little bit lot of the video, so maybe around here. Yep. She shows shows you how she did it. Her example was a bit more ecstatic. She had already two two cells targeted. My contribution is just saying, well, how about if we can switch those variables on those cells? So that's what you're seeing here. They're connected to this and these cells are connected to pivot tables. So. But now for that formula, there's a nice website called the Seaborn Pi Data Org where you can have potentially access to all these charts and all of them are advanced, you know, uh, you ask a data scientist, oh yeah, that's like a pie. Uh, all of these are like pie charts to us, you know. Ah. But um, for a lot of folks, you know, business folks, like, hey, how do I understand this? And how do I understand this and this? Well, I think this is the opportunity, right? This is the opportunity for the Excel users to really now jump into more advanced graphics because the formulas, for example, we just did the join plot. And look, look at the join plot. This is the formula that we just did. We just kind of like adapted to our setting. But that's it. Like you forget yourself about hacking Excel to produce it because you can produce it. But the hex bin, I still haven't figured it out. And I have made some examples where it's fun just to um, hack Excel to get some graphs. But there is always like some sort of limit and time that it, you know, might not be convenient for a lot of folks to invest the time just to get the graph natively with the chart, uh, the normal charts in Excel. Uh, I did mention about the playlist, so if you go to my YouTube channel here on Spill Graphics and then you go to playlist, um, you will see that is like, uh, well, you see my also my private playlist is okay. Um, well, actually, if you just go to home <laughs> and then go to right here, the first playlist that you see is Python in Excel. And if you click here, right here where it says Python in Excel, it will take you actually to another view that is more vertical. And here you can see all the videos that I'm sort of uh, accumulating from the Excel community uh, talking about the, the this new feature, talking about and giving many examples uh, up to now 80 videos and um, you know a lot of resources. Uh, you got Chandu, you got Dermot, you got Wynn, you got Owen Price, you got Bistor Excel that you saw in a little bit. And more videos are coming up and popping up and I'm collecting them because I think uh, just compliments. Uh, um, I, I think I, I'm going to add uh, Tony's the one with he's comparing with Pixel. <laughs> I, said, I think that's go good to know because I think. I mean, um, you know, Python in Excel is kind of new within within the tool natively, but there was also good add-ins before that and um, and I think now it's just uh, people now have options, so that's good. That's good stuff. So let me now collapse this and then we can go into the next uh, tutorial, next example. And before going to that one, let me just advance. OK, OK, OK. So we we also have two versions of the same uh, correlation heat map. And this one uh, again to make this in Excel. Um, not so hard, not so tough because we can do that with conditional formatting and that's it on the on the spreadsheet. Oh, OK, so let me just click save here so it calculates a whole workbook. And while that's calculating this one, OK, we can do this with conditional formatting. 
basically just organizing the columns and rows and making them all square and all that. It's fine. Yep, yeah, it is true. But the thing is like, how about with, for example, it's funny that this grid doesn't go away. Actually, let me recalculate. That should go away. These grid lines right here that I'm sort of, they should go away anytime soon. Yep, there we go. That's how it looks. Sometimes it gets that little bit buggy. Okay. The thing is like, yes, but you know what? Like to, pl to do this plot right here is this formula. Now, a bit longer than the other one. And, uh, but mostly I also have comments. As you can see, you can put comments in Python uh, formulas. But I think comparing this for the time that it would take you to produce this manually, there are some pros and cons. Um, I think the biggest, that mean the, the, the biggest benefit is time that you just copy and paste this formula over and over again to many other workbooks or even create your own library in a, or repository, the, whatever style you want. And then you have just the formula to produce chart or plots with custom formatting or custom aesthetics that you want for them. So you, you can include those aesthetics into your formulas. And that's potentially what maybe is sort of um, um that is the learning curve from python or plots in excel is that you can enhance each individual detail but that is going to require you to learn more syntax to add to your lexicon in order to enhance that small detail of the python plot and yes but as soon as you get that and you get to a point where you actually have a good uh formula that whatever the data set it is this is aesthetics that i want then that's it, you have your Python formula that you can copy and paste. I think that's a big pro, but the big potentially maybe um, con is that usually within the user users uh, environments or I mean Excel users environments is that they want to see kind of how it was done, especially for people who just like, you know, um, just want to see how is this done or how is this calculated? You know, they want to check the calculation, okay, on the back end. Well, the only thing that they have is pretty much a Python formula. So that may be a little bit of a, uh, it's like, uh, you know, they might not trust it, okay? It, you know, it's a bit of paradoxical, but it is what it is. And the other thing is like, for example, compatibility thing issues, because I think these can be backward compatibility, I think, uh, compatible, um, uh, belief, but uh, they cannot play around with. I mean, they cannot edit it if they want to. So this, you have to send this to another person that has Python in Excel in order for them to play with it and also edit them in, in case they wanted to. All right, so how do we do this one? And there's two versions just in case because it's the same plot, but the I just removed this upper part on top of the kind of this purple era, purple stair that you see on top. So, because I wanted to make it cleaner and I uh, want to give credit to my friend Lee, Lee, uh, Leonidas uh, uh, because he kind of gave me the, the, the heads up on, on this one uh, to get this, um, this version right here. So, okay, so let's set up this and now we can maybe go and do this. Maybe we'll do, um, we can copy these two right here but maybe potentially, nope. We actually have to copy this and set it up here. Let me do my she sheet, yep, there we go. So here, let me just show you one thing. Here, what we're about to see and do it real quick is that, for example, I'm showing all the variables, okay? Eventually, I'm doing a correlation heat map and I'm doing a, you know, kind of doing the, what's the correlation of this variable to that variable? And instead of doing it once, as many of us do, doing in our own uh, descriptive statistics, we can do them all at once. This one to this one, this one to this one, this one to this one, and then plot them and then conditional formatting. That's what eventually a correlation heat map is. And you can test those uh, correlationships. So maybe you can say, you know, the likes to this variable compared to the likes of this one is kind of strong, it's at 95. Okay. And then maybe I don't want to see all the variables. Maybe I just want to see these first four. So maybe now I do control enter and now that 
correlation heat map is going to adapt itself to those four variables selected by the user. This is what makes it interactive. So how do we build this real quick? All right, let's go back over here. We already copied this, and now let's just insert uh, a pivot table, a uh, new worksheet. Yep. Again, this is the only part that it rows. Remove the grand total. Uh, right click, pivot table options. Remove auto fit. Design. Remove this and then report layout tabular. OK, now let's just bring this pivot table as it is to the worksheet on two. Put it right here. And then right click, add a slicer. And this slicer kind of controls that. As you can see, we can select, do non uh, adjacent selection or non adjacent selection like this one. We're skipping duration, for example. That also works. Now we do need this formula that is going to be this one pretty much. So let's do the first, the very first. Okay. And as you can see, I'm already having something real cool here. I already have this formula. And this is within this setting with the data set that is on, for example, in Spanish. I'm just now going to copy it here. Oh no, with the control shift, control shift, all P, control V, and maybe do expand this. There we go. So, yeah, wait. So you have the, the formula environment, but you also have Control and F2. There we go. So we can jump into the formula bar with Control F and F2 or Control F2, depending if you're on a keyboard shortcut or a laptop keyboard. Uh, sorry, desktop keyboard or a laptop keyboard. So I can jump into the formula bar, but I, I would have to expand the formula bar, or I can just jump into the cell and, and see it on the cell. Or better, you can have, and let me just do Control Enter here. You can have, for example, the Python editor environment, which now I want to show you because I think it is more convenient in this case. And hopefully it doesn't crash because I noticed that that was sort of something that uh, was have. Uh, there we go. So and expand this. So there we go. Much easier to edit, much easier to read. The con the coloring of the variables, blue and, and green, makes it easy to understand. But here, for example, now I do have to add this and maybe I can go here. Maybe it's easier just to swap this to here. OK, there we go. And I believe is this uh, correct is seven. It is not why is not. Uh, click there. OK, now it's calculating it. Are we good there? We got measures drop. Um, yes, why is not working? TBL data, I'm renaming. Yep, the TBL format that I hear is FF7. So, okay, maybe I'll collapse this a little bit and just why is it not working? Control enter. Um, measures, measures, measures. Uh, oh, yes, my bad. So, variables. So I just got to do variables here and do control enter. Now I should do it. Yep, I should do it. So, OK, my bad. Let's do it maybe here too, as you can see. Kind of promoting Python edit editor in a way, trying to sell it to you because as you can see, look at the comparison here. Nice format, nice environment, especially if you're a, a programmer. Um, yes, the formatting is perfect. The line numbering is also perfect here in, in the cell. You know, yes, it's only one color, monotonous. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you can work, I'd be working and I'm used to it, but I would prefer the Python editor uh, way more because um, yeah, it just, you know, you can tell which is common, which is formula and, and all that. Um, so now, yeah, we're not, we're all set pretty much, but I do want to tell you here, like I haven't gone into the details of the formula, but here, for example, let me just, go through it. I redefined TBL that I did on the previous example to be now data. Again, something that you want to watch out for because Tony made a good uh, point. Uh, last point that he made, you know, the global variables is something that you got to watch out. I mean, go and read about recommended practices from coding. 
here I'm redefining it to be data and then I'm going to variables and Excel, you know, does the function, the bridge function of to make everything happen. I'm grabbing some range cells from the spreadsheet. It has headers and then from that selected from the next variable, he's saying, hey, you know, on variables, drop an A's to list. So that action right there is just grabbing, you know, I'm, I'm saying selecting all this. Maybe I think I have, yep. From all this selection, you know, whenever you see a blank, which is going to be the NAs, you know, drop them. So the drop NA is kind of like a filter out, you know, in this case, and then bring this to a list, okay? This whole thing of two lists is methodologies of Python that you have to get sort of familiar and, um, you know, it's, it's the way to, to go and move forward because um, they're, they're not going to be able to use Python, I mean, Excel formulas. This is going to be your Python formulas or Python methods. Right? Just grab a sip. And then for the subset data, now I do, I re, re, rename it again, subset data, and then subset data core. With this method right here, I do the whole correlation uh, of the data set and produce the matrix. Then I grab that correlation matrix and plot it. First setting something of a plot figure and size of 14 by 10. And then I'm proceeding with, okay, adding the aesthetics, the encoding. So the SNA is uh, S and S is Seaborn because this is a heat map from the Seaborn Python library. And then I'm adding, okay, now the correlation metrics do add annotations, do this color palette of flare, the format to have two decimals, and then the line width between kind of like, uh, you know, the squares to be a, a line width of 0 0.5. And then the, the line, you know, those lines that we see to be white. Then add a title. So to that plot, add a title, and this is what I'm adding, size 20. And then the text. The text is important because, you know, um, else we will have to see it like vertically, but you can sort of make it a, a, a rotation of 20 and write. So that way they're legible. So now that's the part of the formula. Let's close that. Click here, image. Click here now. Create reference. And as you can see, we just produced it. So I didn't spend time hacking Excel. I didn't spend time doing this again. I just copied a formula. And this is, I think, the big wing because now it's kind of like DAX in Power BI. Once you have a pattern, a DAX formula, a DAX pattern, well built, then and optimized, then it could be replicable to other data models. And it's just about copying and pasting. The only negative, and I'll be honest, is that you forget about the, the DAX because you don't practice, you don't build it from scratch again, you just copy and pasting code. So we just gotta forget that, okay, how the parts of the formula work. So that way, you know, again, you know, in case you have to review, you know how it works and then edit it. Uh, I give you, I think the copy, copy and pasting kind of puts at risk uh, your memory because, you know, you kind of forget how the formula works and just being copy and pasting the whole time. So then again, here I just produced it, but then again, like I, I have another version and here we can just maybe do, maybe let's do these two and these two and the last one and recalculate right here, control enter. And as you see that the correlation HEMA is smaller. Yep. Now the other one and is this one, which is much cleaner in my opinion, and also aesthetic, more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, the formula for this is right here, this one. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it and bring it here. Oh, control shift, OP, control V. And maybe look at it, look at the formula. It's all very hard, it's hard to read because it all has the same color. So maybe what I'm gonna do is move this French here, put it like that. And then maybe I'm just gonna switch this to variable, variable. I think on S, right? I think, I, I think it's S. What's the other one? Yep. Yeah. So why is this one not working now? Mm, there we go. 
Control Enter. Mm, variables. Uh, variables. Yep, data two. Oh, okay. So something is not grabbing, not feeling that this is grabbing there. Yes. Control Enter. I uh, still bring this to the. Why is that? Yeah, reselect. Yes, and delete this. On line three. Yeah, okay, so that's fixed. Um, well, variable two has headers. And then, what, what is this? Yep, that's variable. Seem not sure why it's not working. Um, variables. Variables. Select two, select two, select data, pretty much. And now the syntax error that I'm getting is on line three, which is this one right here. But, hmm. Oh, okay, okay. I think I have to delete this. Now it's working. Yeah, there we go. Got lucky. Got lucky there. Um, again, look at this. Look at this format. This formula. Hmm. But if we see it on Python editor, go to insert. Um, we're getting this home Excel labs. Ah, much better, much better, much better. So now is uh, we can expand this. Maybe if we want to see the whole thing. So as you can see, much simpler to see the green lines are comments, and then I see what's happening. Seem might be a little bit shorter, but then I think the aesthetics on this one is here. You know, I'm I'm really enhancing annotation, square, Vmax. This is all Python language. You have to kind of like get to know those in order to get to that level of detail to make it look uh, your chart uh, nice, you know, aesthetically pleasing. I stay away from the word pretty because I think it's overused, but uh, yeah, aesthetically functional. Now I bring it here and then just picture, cell create reference right there. There we go. So as you can see, two versions of the same. And I I think this is simpler because I think here it's just uh, again I don't see I don't understand why those grid lines are popping up. Let's just do Control Enter again and they will go away hopefully. All right, all right. No, I'm pretty much done here. I mean, mm -hmm. I just want to finish a uh, recap and say that uh, the possibilities are now endless. Like this is another chart. This is another chart, and this is all Python. And my, that might look like an Excel graph, but it's in Python. This is another Python formula. I'm switching here the panel. Uh, this is another one. I mean, here one I would like to end because this one, or oh, actually before that one, look at this one. This doesn't look, a, a, friend, a good friend was just telling me yesterday, hey, you know what the thing about Python plots is that like, they're kind of like, they, 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 you know, they, they all look the same. They don't look like, you know, people add nice touches you know like or, or aesthetically the you know aesthetic they don't care about the details the aesthetic details so here you can see that it doesn't look like is this one will be very hard to make in excel and then this one i have care about the details and look at the formula not so long is that formula to use that plot right there so it's not a lot of details to care but really maybe caring about the details that matter that maybe just enhance the plot to be to be nice you know and here I just want to end that this one may be a simple scatter plot, but here is also the big wing because this is kind of interactive. We play around with the variables on the y and x uh, x axis, but we also play around with the number of clusters on an algorithm that is called k-means, which is for a lot of Excel users way advanced because uh, this is pretty much machine learning. And the formula for all of this is this. Yes, might, might get a lot of people scared off right now. But don't worry, because this is a cool thing. You, you take your time, you make the investment to build this uh, once and build it very well your first time. And then you just can use this formula uh, or actually for this plot over and over again. And the part of the clustering, which is the mathematical part, is right here pretty much, okay? You know, you just have k-means fit and that's it pretty much because you're bringing another library called Scikit into Excel. So again, 
Python in Excel is is bridging two worlds. I think uh, I think the the future looks bright, and that's it for me, uh, Tim. Sorry, I went a little bit over. Uh, that's a photo of myself. I spill graphics. Uh, that's my blog, as you can find me there. And again, uh, the my YouTube channel here you can find, or you can just type Python in Excel playlist. And this is a, a playlist that I'm curating. Do I still have time for answer? I mean, questions. Sorry, Tim. Awesome. We've got we've got two minutes for Q and A. So if you want to speed through some of these questions, that'll be great. Um, sure, sure. Okay. So if a pi variable has the same name as a table or named range, will it cause any errors? If a yeah, I mean potentially, uh, <laughs> potentially yes, yeah, potentially. There is kind of also reserve names within that. I still haven't come. Uh, I still haven't come across a reserve name. But yes, the, potentially that can be a conflict. Yep. All right. Um, can we create custom functions with Pi like Lambda for non-IT users? Yeah. Yeah. Big jazz. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 that's another level. Uh, I I don't know if I'll get to that level to be honest, but I know that that's potentially yeah. Um, I have seen people doing custom talking about custom functions. Uh, Lambda is kind of, I think, already exists in in Python, and I don't know if Tony is still around, but uh, he might answer that, but uh, more confidently. But I think, yeah, I mean, the Python is already way advanced compared to, in in that sense, uh, with uh, compared to Excel. So yes. All right, uh, and one last question then that we've got time for. It. Um, does the Py Python chart update automatically when some cell values change? Yes, it, it does. The only thing is like, for example, right here, um, the thing is I have my on my calculation uh, set to partial. Um, so before, you know, it's only automatic and manual, but now because Excel is advancing, now you have this partial calculation where you can actually control here. And the, the reason I have it in partial, and maybe look at this, uh, maybe let's switch it to, to uh, formulas, automatic. OK, so now let's do this. I, I don't have to do control enter anymore, so I'm just going to do maybe this. It takes its time, about a second or two. Just give it time. Yep, there we go. So you can see there, maybe do this once now. So now it just updates, yep, automatically. If you have calculation mode on automatic, if you if you have it like that, and I think that should calculate right there. Yep. Awesome. All right. I think that's all we've got time for, unfortunately. So thank you again, Carlos. Appreciate you uh, coming and presenting for us. Uh, as always, it's a pleasure to have you here. Hey, thank you, Tim. Thank you. Yeah, now I'm I'm going back to bed, going running. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way. That's the way. It's been a blast. It's been a blast. Thank no you. Worries. Thank you for the thank time. Thank you again. Um, for everyone else who's tuning in, um, please give us some feedback on how Carlos says it. Carlos's session went. Um, I've just put up a QR code for the uh, feedback link. Uh, again, it's bit.ly slash EVG in capital letters 2023 and feedback.